Hey guys, uh, this video is all about making this amazing UI element, uh, basically a mask test and a prototype for it, all in Figma. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, let's start with the most scary part, a blank canvas. Let me just uh, change the dimensions to 1920 by 1080 and rename the frame it's always the best practice to rename your frame and uh yeah let's get started with the navbar i'm thinking uh the navbar will be dog on the left side not on the top side because he is that space and yeah this is a concept so why not so for the nav items i'm thinking home uh category the contactors i'm not sure about this come on but yeah it's a imaginary project so shouldn't be stressing too much about nav items so i'm just going to quickly rename this as category and this one as contactors <laughs> don't worry about the blurred out part it's just some text from work so not hiding anything there okay just make this all caps all right space them out a bit and uh if you're a beginner or someone who already knows figma and how to use it so and you're here just to see how i make the mask text effect and the prototype so i've been making chapters for this youtube video so you can just skip to that okay uh, let me just add a title there make it all caps and then space them out give it some uh actually huge amount of letter spacing okay that looks good and yeah the font which i'm using for this project is uh Montserrat. it's a free font uh i think it's available in google fonts so yeah you shouldn't have problems finding that font uh why i chose this font is because of its readability okay now for the movie pic um so yeah i made a rectangle and i had the pictures already that i downloaded from uh from a basic google search so for this project for this particular element i'm just gonna mask them okay and then group them but figma has an option where uh, you can just uh search for any image in uh your internet or chrome and you select that image uh copy it basically Control c and you go come to figma uh select that particular element and when you hit command uh, or Control v it's going to paste that element so no masking required now for the best part <laughs> the mask test I'm just gonna make uh, two text fields because I want the chapter two part to be squeezed a bit because it's a lengthy text. So yeah, let's do that. Hmm. Okay, looking good. Just gonna group them and yeah, name your groups and frames. Always a best practice. <laughs> okay. <coughs> Oh, that's a scary eye. Okay, I'm just going to copy the image, paste it here. Now, this is the best part. So, I'm going to select that text group and there is an option to mask it. So, when I mask it, everything above that layer will be masked. And if I put the image above the text uh, group in, uh, uh, in the layers panel, so it's going to mask that text and basically whatever is uh, above that particular element uh, which is selected to mask, it's going to appear uh in that basically it will be masked so uh if you want to cap it off then you can select the element and the masked um text and just group it so that will cap off uh anything and you can have uh, any other element placed above the text layer text group layer okay just make the image large okay 
So yeah, I'm just gonna squeeze it a bit, but by squeezing, I think I'm putting the uh, the Roman numerical two there uh, a bit close. So I'm just gonna add some space. And by the way, uh, this is a cool tip. So if you have mask, uh, if you have like a mask text here, and you want to change the text, if you double click, that's gonna straight away select the uh, the image which is being masked. Instead of that, what I uh, what I recommend you to do is uh, hide the image, select the layer, text layer. Now it will be selectable, and then change your text. Let's add some more elements to make it interesting. Let me just go to Wikipedia. I don't know who's the director of this movie. Okay, just paste it and. While we are at it, might as well grab some lines uh, about the movie itself. So, a description. Okay. So, yeah, uh, for the description, I'm uh, reducing the boldness of the text because um, always place your uh, elements according to a particular hierarchy. In this case, the director, uh, it holds up a, a uh better position i guess so you want it to stand out from the uh description itself so that's why i'm keeping it both all right um now that is sorted and yeah for the stars okay i'm using a plugin called iconify on this icon looks better and I don't know why, for some reason, whenever I uh, import an icon from uh, Iconify, it always gives me in a frame. But in this case, I don't want a frame. Just place the icon there. Maybe make it a bit bigger. Okay. I'm just gonna hold Alt and copy the image. So. Here's another uh, Figma tip, if you uh, basically make an action, if you copy an element by holding Alt and you place it somewhere and after that when you hit Ctrl D, it's going to duplicate or uh, yeah, it's going to repeat the same action again and again. So I'm just going to group it and I'm going to duplicate that particular group. I'll tell you in a second why. So <coughs> select the bottom text, mask it. Now I'm gonna put the uh, rectangle in between the two uh, star layers. Okay, I'm just gonna rename it. Okay. Why I did that was because of this. So basically, that group acts as a mask, and the rectangle behind it acts as a progress bar. So yeah. So if you want to change the ratings dynamically, uh, basically in the next artboard you are having some movie which is rated 2, uh, it's not, uh, yeah, you can just scale it down and yeah, leave it there. Now if you see, uh, whenever I scale it down, uh, I scale the bar down, the stars aren't that visible. So that's why I made the, another duplicate, so this top star probe. I'm gonna, um, I removed the fill for it and added a stroke so that way uh, no matter where the bar is the five stars will also always be visible so I'm just gonna add a rating there 6.5 out of 10 and if it is 6.5 this bar will be here somewhere okay make it a bit darker hierarchy okay no, no, that is stupid okay looks good Okay, space them out equally. All right, this is looking good. Uh, let's add some call to actions. So, okay, okay, let's add a watch now button. So, just gonna make a rectangle. I'm thinking of uh, something uh, like a dark blue because uh, the theme matches it. So, I'm just gonna reduce the size. Lord, give it some letter spacing and make it rounded. It's gonna play around with the colors a bit and maybe a size because I don't think it's the size it is now. It, I don't think it's appropriate. It's taking too much space. Okay, yeah, it is taking too much space. Okay, I'm just gonna group it and 
play around with the values so uh, if you're just starting out then you should you should play around with stuff so yeah what do do? All right. Uh, let's make a login and sign up page. Now, uh, login isn't the primary CTA. It's sign up because if you're logging in, then chances are you're already uh, you, you have, that you have already visited the site. So I'm making it less obvious by uh, uh, removing the fill and adding a stroke key login and i think i can make this more interesting by reducing the opacity of the background layer basically the uh, rectangular layer okay sign up you know invert it remove the stroke add in the fill and it's gonna be pure white and because of it, uh, because it is translucent it's getting that grayish tint okay just gonna align them and put a tray. Okay, I'm just gonna play around with the sizes. Fit to width. Okay, this is looking good. Hmm. Uh, let's add some elements here. Basically, I want to add the uh, number of this movie and basically a next button so the font uh it's my personal favorite so it's called federation i think it was uh used for shelby uh cobra's logo so i downloaded this font uh like a, a while back so i can't remember when but this is an awesome font so i'm just gonna increase the size and this font doesn't uh come with like the weights so it's it's just a normal font so if you want to make this bold then you have to add a stroke all right and oh uh, yeah again a uh, figma tip here if you have used any plugin and you want to use it again uh you, you have to just hit uh control or command in mac control alt p so that will run the last plugin that you have used you just Uh, circle there. Let's make it big and line it. Okay. Okay, space them up. And yeah, this is looking good. All right, I have made uh, similar copies of that uh, artboard and have different images and different movies there. Let's start with the prototype. Okay, for the starting point, I want this now bar, now bar to move in from the left. So I'm just going to move it all the way to the left. And this text, I want to move it from the right. So I'm just going to push it to the right. In the description, it's, uh, I want it to have a slow velocity, so a little bit low and i want the stars to fill up as it loads up i'm just gonna move the elements from there okay i'm gonna make a mistake i'm just gonna hide it and show you what it's like uh, but let me just prototype it first so the trigger will be on click navigate to smart animate and thousand milliseconds a second I'll just show you what's going on here when I click on that if you basically just hide elements it's not gonna smart animate as you see here it's just gonna fade it in so we don't want that so I'm just gonna <coughs> undo all the changes select all the elements and instead of hiding it uh, hiding them I'm just gonna reduce their opacity to zero okay and now I just check in the prototype and I click. Oh, I forgot to prototype it. So, one second. 
uh, select the ID to artboard, connect it there, and yeah, the trigger will be on click, smart animate, and a thousand milliseconds. Okay, that looks good. Now, for the transition between uh, the IT artboard and the non artboard, so uh, I went for a different approach here because uh, I wanted to export this uh, these artboards to After Effects and maybe use it as a reference uh, to Golden uh, Webflow. So I wanted it to be as clean as possible. So what I did here was uh, make a uh, intermediate artboard, I guess. So I'm just gonna move the element, the IT Chapter Two text box, to the left because that's where I want it to go, and I want the non text to move in from the right. So I'm just gonna place it there, and as it is moving in, I want that masked image uh, inside it to uh, kind of condense. So I'm just gonna make it large and raise its opacity. Now for the prototype part. Uh, I'm going to select the ID2 artboard and connect it to the intermediate artboard and uh, the trigger will be click and smart animation so what I want to do is here uh, the intermediate board and the none artboard will be uh, the trigger will be a uh, delay so it's going to be one millisecond. That's the least you can have in Figma. Navigate to and the uh, easing will be ease out and it will be 500 milliseconds. So the first interaction will be ease in and 500 milliseconds. So all together when it's transitioning from the IT chapter two to the none, it will be ease in and out and the interaction will be 1000 milliseconds. Boy, that was a lot of work. <laughs> okay, that is looking good. So I'm just going to repeat the same process uh, to the none and Annabelle artboard. Okay, move to the left. As opacity to zero. Copy the Annabelle creation text. Paste it here. Move it to the right. And expand the image, mask the image. Uh, is it to oh, I forgot the prototype. So, for the prototype, uh, if you want a trigger but it is uh, grayed out and you can't access it, uh, you can't access it, then there's a chance that the particular trigger is being used for another interaction. So, make sure you delete that interaction uh, if it is placed by mistake, and then you can have that trigger there. All right, so this is looking good. Uh, I will link the Figma files in the description below. So yeah, if you like this kind of content and uh, yeah, do like the video and subscribe. So have a good one.